In the last video, we wrote an immutable 2D vector. In this video, we're going to start our mutable 2D vector. In both cases, we are writing them in a very standard kind of plain Jane object oriented form, and we're going to evolve them through the course of this playlist to be more kind of appropriate Scala classes. So we'll call this mutable vec 2D. Okay, so unlike the immutable version, the immutable version had two vals. This is going to have two private vars. They're basically the same thing as far as the information that they store and their types. We have an x value and a y value. And actually, I am going to call them underscore x and underscore y so that we can have accessor methods. And we've seen this previously. So x is underscore x, def y is underscore y. And that allows us to get access to the values of x and y without allowing outside code to necessarily have the ability to directly set them. Now, of course, <clears throat> turns out I'm about to completely change that because I'm actually going to write a set x where I pass in a new value for x that is a double, and then I'm, it's not going to give anything back, and it's just going to be underscore x equals new x. Okay, so now it is possible at this point to ask, why did I bother making these private if I'm going to allow people to set them directly? It's actually a very good question. It turns out the answer is for educational purposes. Okay, this is going to allow us to illustrate some of the features of, of Scala here in a bit, and so it's just useful to to put things in this way because there are there definitely are classes where these sets actually could have checks on them. Okay, make sure that things are valid. Things like with our in our bank account, the deposit and the withdraw have checks to make sure the amounts are are reasonable, and then they will fail if if it's not reasonable. As with our immutable vector we might have things like a plus method so I'm going to mutable vec 2d I'm going to pass in a mutable vector and this is going to give us back a mutable vec 2d and what we're going to do here so on the immutable version what the plus did is it created a new vector for us with these altered values. This version is actually going to change the values that are inside of here. That's why we wanted it to be mutable. So underscore x is going to be incremented by the version that the value that's in our mutable, uh, other vector that was passed in, and underscore y is also going to be incremented by the mv.y value. As with before, we have a plus. We're going to make a minus. So we get that. We're going to write a scale method, def scale, where once again we're going to pass in a magnitude as just a regular double. Oh, and actually, there you'll note that I have some errors here. We'll come back and fix those in just a second. So scale is going to take the x value and multiply it by c and the y value and multiply it by c. And last up will be a magnitude just like we had before. So these three are unhappy because I said that I was going to return a mutable vector. We could actually make these so they return unit. That would be possible, but then you couldn't string operations together. It turns out it's actually helpful to be able to say plus something and then minus something and whatnot. The mutable vector I want to give back is not a new one. Here I was giving back a new vector because we couldn't change the original. Here I change the original and then I want to give back the thing I just changed so that I can chain these operations together. So we're going to use the this keyword here and give back the current vector, uh, the one that we just mutated, so that it can be used for further operations. As before, let's go ahead 
and write a companion object for this that has a main method in it so that you can see how this is used and that and basically how it winds up being different than the immutable version as far as the way that we interact with it in the code. So I'm also going to make a v1 which is a new mutable vect2d We'll give it the same value as we had before because they have a nice magnitude. We're going to make a v2 that is 2, 2. Now this is where things get different. Previously, we had made v3 that was the sum of those two because when we did our plus operation, it didn't change either of the originals. It gave us back a new one. Now, if I call v1.plus v2 on this mutable version, that is actually altering v1 so that v1 is actually is incremented by the the values that are stored in v2 and then i can print out the magnitude of v1 and again that should be 5 okay so this shows you how there is a fundamental difference when we interact with the mutable version in how we interact with it. Because it mutates things, we don't have to make a v3. But we did cause mutation, and so there are drawbacks to, to that. Uh, I would also argue that in some ways, with how we're going to push this forward, this is going to be harder code to, to read in the long run. It, the immutable version will actually give us nicer code for writing math in.